to that uh, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Lazer Brody joined us from Mincha Marev and uh, spoke beautiful words in between Mincha Marev. And I think you notice something very strikingly different between myself and Rabbi Brody when it comes to the world of tshuva. When Rabbi Brody gets up to speak, tshuva becomes the happiest thing in the world. Everybody's smiling, everybody's ready to jump and go do tshuva and return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'll just say that I can't say that every time that I speak, that's the way that everybody feels about tshuva. So I would like the chizuk, and I would like the smile, and I would like the positivity. So really it's an honor and a covet once again for Rabbi Brody to enlighten us with his words into the world of tshuva. Father Av is the principal of the school, and I'm the gym teacher. That's his funny games. And when it's all fun and games. Baruch Hashem, beloved brothers, going to take a shtickle zor and put it into terms that we can see eye level. And this is a laser Brody rendition of a, of a zor that has to do with Rosh Hashanah. Okay, you got this Texas turkey farmer. And this Texas turkey farmer, he found a nice girl and they're going to get married. He's about to get married, but he's working all the way right up until the wedding is at 8 o'clock in the evening. And uh, his family brings him a tuxedo and uh, finishes working with the turkeys. And he goes and he dresses, changes clothes, puts on the tuxedo, puts on his top hat, comes to uh, get married, and there's this weird smell. Everybody's all dressed up and everything. There's this weird smell. Inside the wedding hall, it smells like a turkey farm. You ever been inside a turkey farm? Oh, yeah, it's... <laughs> It smells like a turkey farm inside the wedding hall. They're looking around, one's looking at another. And here's the hus and the groom. He's standing there, and he's got a new tuxedo, and he's dressed up in expensive clothes and a black tie. And he smells like a turkey. It sounds kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? Do you know, that's every one of us in Rosh Hashanah, come to Rosh Hashanah with our best clothes, our best clothes, and they come and dove and look great. And the Malach had come down and <laughs> said, Boy, we can't take those prayers. They smell like turkeys. What does that happen? There's three levels of the neshama. There's a level of the neshama, the outer level of the neshama, that's called nefesh. Nefesh corresponds to our deeds. Then there's the middle level of neshama, that is the ruach, and that corresponds to our speech. Like Rabbi Shom Bar says, ruach marala. That's the cost of speech. Then there's the inner level of our neshama, and that is the neshama itself. Chelik elok mi ma'al, says Rabbi Shimon right there. It is a tiny spark of a shem, and that is our machshava. Because the neshama, anatomically, it's in the, it's in the brain. It's in the brain, just the corresponds. And we come, and we've gone through the motions, but our thoughts are not in the right place. So somebody says, let's say if we have a, a uh, psychiatrist, psycho psychologist, and they say, uh, oh, Reb, you, you're wrong. We can't control the thoughts. The thoughts go. No, Baal Shem Tov says otherwise. Baal Shem Tov says a person is where his thoughts are, which means we can't both control our thoughts. But how do we control our thoughts? So one day, maybe you think, Kvodorav, okay, now I'm going to come over to Kvodorav's side. Kvodorav says, come on, guys, Kovea Itim, you've got to learn more. We need more learning in the community. I said, I don't have time. I have this and that. There's only one way where we can cleanse our thoughts, and that's we have our heads in Torah. We're walking around, and we have a sugi in our head. One great thing, talk about the neshama, the letters of the mission that correspond to the letters of neshama, and a great way to cleanse the thoughts is we take, anyone can do it. You don't have to be a guy that learned in Ponovich for, for eight years. We learn it mishnayis by heart. Make yourself a new year, a little Elo plan. One do the chizuk in Elo. I'm going to take two Mishnayas and learn them by heart. And then every time I see something that takes me out of Torah, I'm going to go through my Mishnayas. Go through my Mishnayas in my head. You cannot imagine what the Chafetz Chaim, when the Chafetz Chaim talks about the problematics of speaking Loshan Hara, which with every moment of speech that we're speaking, bad, 
that we could have been speaking good, but here's the good news. Rashi tells us in Aseris Adibros that mida toiva meruba mida toponu chamesh mot palm, that a measure of good is 500 times better than a measure of bad. Now let's take, for example, Shabbat. It's mind-boggling what we could do in Elul before Rosh Hashanah. Suppose a person talks about the ball game or chulin or something. something that it's not Shabbos dick. Dabra Dover. Okay, so it's not seven times like slander, but it's Isu de Rabbonin. It's Isu de Rabbonin. When a person just thinks about a mission in his head, every word that he thinks about this is even deeper than thought because he's thinking about it. It's take the seven, compare it to some slant, it's the seven, instead of thinking bad, take the seven and multiply it by 500, that's 3,500. One thought of one word of Torah is 3,500 times stronger than one thought of hate in one's heart. Because it, it, hate is Easter derisa. So when one thought of a Torah, in learning Torah, that's Asa derisa. 3,500 times more powerful. The neshama gets clean. The brain gets clean. What one word of Torah could do, that's one mishnah, one mishnah. Take two mishnayas, two mishnayas a day, because that's going to make a plan, and I'm going to strengthen my learning. I'm going to come to the king on Rosh Hashanah with two mishnayas. Ashrei, and that's what we say, Ashrei, each, Ashrei, Misha, Baruch, Betola, Tobi, Yodol. That was happy is the person who say, but when a person after 120 goes up to the Oilam Emet and he has his Torah, he comes with his Torah. But here, now we go, we go to the king on Rosh Hashanah, we go to the king and we present him with a clean smelling neshama. This is the way to cleanse ourselves for Rosh Hashanah. Not only that, Chovas uh, Levova says we have to do Cheshbon Nefesh every day. This is the second thing that I would encourage someone to do. If you don't do cheshbon nefesh every day, the Chobos Lebal says he can't do it. So this is our spiritual hygiene. Just like we take a shower every day, especially in the, the warm summer weather. Before you go to bed, Rabbi Shem Baruch says in the, in the Zohar, the person before he puts his head on the pillow, even after Kriya Shema, says, Shari man de He says, I forgive, in Aramaic, I forgive anyone that did me any harm. You can only do that with Amunah. If you believe that everything comes from Hashem, it's all for the best. But hey, forgiving everyone and cleansing ourselves, our thoughts with the Torah and cleansing ourselves when he cleans, what, what did I do? What did I do is something very simple. It's saying, Hashem, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to do better tomorrow. Boom, you did perfect tshuva. That's wonderful tshuva. You did a cheshbon nefesh. So maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I talked about my competitor or I talked about someone else. Hashem, I know that was a clipping. If it's on the football field, flag on the field 15 yards. Hashem, I'm going to try and do better. Hashem doesn't expect you to promise never to talk Lush and Iran. You can't do that. Can't make a promise like that. But you could certainly say, Hashem, I have the Ratzon. Do better. Everything is up to Hashem except for one thing Hashem leaves to us. A Ratzon, our desire, our desire to be better. So you take a little bit of Cheshbon Nefesh and a little bit of strength in Torah. That's the whole ball game in Elo. It is so simple. And it makes you feel so good, so much comfort. It doesn't matter what you do. What do you do? Do you think anybody could accomplish anything? I knew in Israel, there was a retired cab driver. He came after he retired, came to us. His name was Hanina, from Brooklyn. This guy, cab driver, for 56 years, he learned Daf Yomi without missing a day. Mozart Tisha he learned the Daf that he missed during the day. Never missed a day. So here we have a retired cab driver, simple, mama, simple Jew, who finished Shas eight times. Imagine, I know this was, I knew Hanina when I was a Koyla Yungaman Yushalai, when I was in Koyla Hara, maybe 38 years ago, and that back then he was 88. So I, I just imagine what we could do by taking a Kriya Centura and every day, a kviyas in Torah, that they learn in a Mishnah, take this my weekly project, they learn one Mishnah, one Mishnah by heart, learn one Mishnah, one Mishnah. You know, you know what happens in, in Krav Maga? In Krav Maga, you're by yourself and you get jumped by eight people. So you try and beat all the eight people, and you can't do it. But what you do in Krav Maga, you get one guy and give him Barachal Bita Ktana, and the others, they, they run. This is what happens with the Torah. We don't try and grab the whole Torah at once. 
We take it. Had, somebody said, never learned Gomorrah. How do I start Gomorrah? May Mosai. Brochus, base, Ahmed, Aleph. May Mosai. Start. We take ourselves, give ourselves small things and keep going. Like an army that's in a, in a war, capture another inch of territory, another inch of territory, but never go back. So every day, a little bit of Cheshbon Nefesh and a little bit of Torah. And over the long time, it will cleanse ourselves. It will bring us close to Hashem. And Hashem will certainly, because of our desire to get close to Him and to have sweet-smelling neshamas, Hashem will give us a sweet life and sign us and seal us for a sweet new year, 5784. Amen.